everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode and today on Hot La Mode we are going to be talking about Ricardo Tichy's appointment to Burberry. Now, before we get into the actual video, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, interesting, sassy way, this is the channel for you so you can go down below and hit the subscribe button and also turn on my post notifications so that you know when I post. Usually I post Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but just in case I have to put out some breaking news, it's always good to turn on the post notifications. Also, if you like these kinds of dissecting of fashion news videos, definitely give this video a like. And you can definitely check me out on Instagram, at Mode if you wanna see what I think about everything that goes on in the industry. And I post some pretty poppin' memes, so check it out. So let's get into the video and let's talk about Ricardo Tisci at Burberry. I know that I say Ricardo Tisci on every other video, but you have all corrected me and said that I should die about it, so Tisci, you're welcome. Now we got the Ricardo Tisci news in the middle of Milan or Paris Fashion Week, I don't really remember which one and I'm not gonna look it up, but it was kind of shocking. What happened was, for months on end, we had been told, oh, Donatello's stepping down from Versace, it's gonna be Ricardo, he's gonna go there, it's gonna be so amazing. Kim Jones stepped down from Louis Vuitton, he's British, he's gonna go to Burberry, Christopher Bailey is out. Like, it, it was very sad. Like, we all thought this. We all thought this is what was gonna happen, and then announcement came out, and we were all like, what? Okay. I'm pretty positive that a lot of Brits believe that Burberry is a British brand and that a Brit should be in the house and at the helm of Burberry. And honestly, it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, how many Brits have been at the helm of French or Italian brands? Dior, anyone? A lot of brands kind of shift around. You have Stuart Vevers at Coach and Raph Simmons at Calvin Klein. You know, a lot of non-French people have worked at houses like Dior and Chloe. So there is a lot of mishmashing of designers and ethnicities and nationalities. So it's not that big of a deal. But in order to talk about Ricardo, I think we first have to talk about Christopher and the Burberry that he created. So Christopher started Burberry in 2001. And with that, Christopher had just stepped down as senior fashion designer at Gucci under Tom Ford. You can see that in a lot of Christopher's early collections for Burberry. Not inherently the sleek sexiness that you see from Tom Ford at Gucci, but the kind of 60s references that often go on in Tom Ford for Gucci. The brand is very trend oriented. It is not a house like Dior where there is constant creativity, not now, but previously to this. There's not all that much creativity that goes into it. The brand essentially has to sell the Burberry plant. That is what it does. There was an incident in like the early 2000s where Chavs, who are kind of the English lower class and are looked down upon in British society, were buying Burberry pieces and the kind of net worth and the brand image kind of went down because the people purchasing the brand were not luxury consumers. But Christopher Bailey kind of helped to turn the Burberry tide and make it more of a respectable brand. I will say a lot of Christopher's early collections as I started doing research about the brand have, you know, become a lot more likable for me. I do see a lot of belting. It seems to be something that he does in like every single collection. It seems to be something he feels very strongly about. And I, there are a couple collections that I kind of enjoy. So I'm not, you know, a super hater of Christopher Bailey. I just think the past couple of collections have been very trying to do what the cool kids are doing. And I don't think that that ever works when brands try to be cool and popular. Like you have to have a creative director that is really speaking from the heart now in terms of customers and design wise. It can't look like it's trying. It has to be creative, it has to be genuine, it has to inherently be new. And Christopher at Burberry after a while was just not that. I see it as a brand of like the British royal family, not like Kate or the Queen or Harry or any of those ones. I see it as like Beatrice and Eugenie who are like the cousins. Those are the two British royals that you don't want to be your brand ambassador, so it needs a bit of fixing. And the thing is, I do see some similarities between Christopher and Ricardo's collections from like the 2010s on. 
In particular, I saw a lot of lace overlays, which is something that Ricardo is really known for, but Christopher also did it. And even there was this whole band jacket moment that Ricardo and Christopher did in the same season. So I don't think that it's gonna be such a hard transition for Ricardo. So we're done talking about Christopher, but Christopher was great. I think that it was just time for him to go. And no tea, no shade. Christopher, thank you for what you did for the brand when you did it. I just think that we need to move on. But let's talk about Ricardo. He is essentially the goth. So Ricardo grew up in an Italian household in the north of Italy. He grew up very poor, the youngest of, I believe, seven children. He was the only boy in the family, and he states that a lot of the times his clothing had to be altered from women's clothing to men's clothing. So that's why you see a lot of androgyny and a lot of the same fabrics going into his men's and women's wear. So after growing up in Italy, Ricardo moved to London to study at Central St. Martin's and that is where he got his design chops from. He is like the goth kid of fashion. It is very much so known within fashion that Ricardo is a goth. But with that, Ricardo probably is one of the most diverse and inclusive designers. And it's not like he's just riding the trend. Ricardo has been doing inclusivity and you know diversity since like 2014 at the very earliest. I went through a 2014 collection and found that like 17 out of the 50 models were models of color, which is that perfect? No. But in 2014, pretty amazing considering that most brands still can't get that many girls of color on a runway and deem it acceptable. So I have to give Ricardo a lot of credit there. He really didn't steamroll the movement, but definitely was doing it before everybody else was. Ricardo also has a knack for indigenous and African prints. You see it in a lot of his collections for Givenchy. So Ricardo did do quite a few writing pieces throughout his time at Givenchy. I think that riding and horse culture is a very British thing. The hunt, you know, horse racing, polo, like those things are very British. So I'm interested to see how that kind of plays into Ricardo's view on the British aristocracy and what he thinks the British aristocracy has to do with his Burberry. And I mean, there's even like a horse on the Burberry logo. So like foreshadowing, there's been foreshadowing for forever. I also believe that couture was a very important part of Ricardo Givenchy. I don't think Burberry is gonna be rolling out a couture line anytime soon. So I'm wondering where his couture influences and his just like knack for doing couture could come in and be a part of his Burberry experience. And also he worked a lot with Nike, which is very far from couture. So I wanna see where that influence also comes in. I don't know what his Burberry is going to be like. It could be very emo, it could be very gothic, it could be very not, it could be very sportswear, it could be very current and trendy. I think that it will be an interesting experience. And while I did really want a gothic Versace, I think I can live with the idea of a gothic Burberry. So with that, let me know what you guys think of Ricardo's appointment at Burberry, all of the information that I talked about, like tell me how you're feeling about it, like what you think is gonna happen with the brand. I want to know what you guys think. Also, thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments as well if you guys like the three videos a week, if it's too much, should I go down to two? Like, how are you feeling about that? So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.